This conversation was sponsored by Dash, an open sourced, decentralized, and privacy centric digital currency with instant transactions. Learn more at dash.org. All right. Um, on a slightly separate topic. Yeah, get out of the drama. Huh? <laughs> oh, there's plenty of drama what on this would one. Be Bitcoin without drama. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's inherited. Be fun. Yeah, it inherited it from the libertarian circles. Right? <laughs> yeah, everybody wants to have drama about something. The price hasn't been doing much. Uh, yeah, you know, got to have some drama. Yeah, it's fun. But it, but hey, if you're gonna if you're gonna bring drama to the basketball court, you better be good. Brutally honest meritocracy. You know, you you're gonna bring drama. You know, you better be able to make the three pointers. You know. Right. So speaking of drama, Peter Todd um, somehow got some code called RPF to replace by fee sort of um, um, improvement or right into the Bitcoin core, and uh, a lot of people are saying that it basically killed the zero confirmations market. Like retail, if you want to go pay with Bitcoin, he now has sort of he has open source software that you can run on your phone or like on your computer and double spend a zero confirmation like fairly easily. Uh, you have to connect it to a full full node, so you kind of have to either have a really good computer or be sort of doing it over the internet. But he's basically like that's a he he sort of opened up a Pandora's box, which a lot of people have been saying, okay, zero confirmations could be defrauded. Maybe there's ATMs that are being defrauded. He sort of made that claim before. Um, so Bitcoin has seemed to seems to have sort of gone a step back as far as retail and its use as money on the spot. What do you think about it, that whole situation? Why do we have a blockchain? Peer-to-peer -peer payments. Okay, but why do we have a blockchain? We can do peer-to-peer -peer payments with, with Visa, with MasterCard, with cash. Why do we have a blockchain? It's not really peer-to-peer -peer through Visa, right? Because Visa could say, no, you can't send money to that guy over there. Well, I mean, what is a blockchain? So it's a global ledger of transactions that keeps keeps the keeps count of who owns what. And if I sign a you know, if I create a transaction and I sign a transaction and I put it in my shoe drawer, did that transaction happen? I signed it. But it's in the bottom of my shoe drawer. Hasn't happened until it hits the blockchain really. And what does it mean to hit the blockchain? That it gets mined by a block, Bitcoin, or at least a few Bitcoin blocks. That it has a confirmation. So what's the difference between a zero confirmation transaction that has been broadcast to the network and the transaction that's sitting in my shoe drawer waiting for my niece's birthday? Well, the one that hasn't been confirmed could be replaced, right? And that's basically what Peter Todd has made easier to do, right? Couldn't both of them be replaced? Yeah, until until it hits the blocks, right? Until it actually gets confirmed, added to a block. I mean, six confirmations is actually what developers have long recommended as best practices for reliance on whether a confirmation whether a transaction has happened or not. Because, you know, there can be stale blocks, there can be orphan blocks. Uh, these can result in reorganizations, like when uh, forks have happened. In some cases, it's been you know up to twelve or thirteen blocks. I think uh, when the, when this validationless mining was happening. Uh, but at the end of the day, like uh, confirmations only give you increased confidence that the transaction actually happened. Uh, it's one of the reasons uh, when when miners mine a new block. How long do they have to wait until they can spend the block reward? How long do miners have to wait until they can spend the block reward? They gotta be able to wait at least six six confirmations, right? Try a uh, hundred, more or less. Yeah. Why? Why is that? Because we, Satoshi wanted to make sure that there wasn't going to be this reorg on a massive scale. Right, uh, so that there would be very, so that our view of the past would be much more solid or tangible. 
zero confirmation transactions never meant to be relied upon, uh, never meant to be secure. That's why we have a blockchain. That's why we have confirmations. That's why we have blocks and we chain them together with nonces and and mining. I mean, so all, I wouldn't say that Peter Todd has opened a Pandora's box. Uh, he's just pointing out what should be glaringly obvious to everybody, particularly people like BitPay, you know, who processes retail transactions. And I have every confidence in BitPay and Coinbase uh, and other merchant processors that they're that they'll be able to to deal with these types of things. You know, they're very skilled. Uh, I I have every confidence in them. And if they're not able to deal with it. Maybe they shouldn't be on the court. <laughs> So do you see Bitcoin as a, as a currency, like an everyday currency where you go and buy your food every day? Or, or is it, do you think it's, it's better suited for a settlement layer for large transactions? What would you like it to be? What do you think it, it's better, best at? Yeah, so I've done a lot of thinking on this. And how I've kind of organized it in my own mind is, uh, well, first is the question, why do we hire Bitcoin? You know, what, what does it do for us? Like, why do we hire it? What job does it perform that, we, that, that it does hopefully better than something else? Uh, is it better than gold? You know, Roger Ver, he had a great presentation here at uh, Anarchapoco. And, you know, very strong and convincing case that Bitcoin is superior to gold in a lot of ways. And I agree with him. Uh, that would be speculation, you know, holding it as a store of value. That would be the first network effect. The second network effect would be merchants that accept Bitcoin because people hold it. Hey, as 50 Cent said, all money's money. That's why he accepts Bitcoin. Then we've got consumers that will use Bitcoin because merchants accept it. You know, things like purse.io or remittances. Uh, miners will secure Bitcoin because of that increased demand, which raises the amount of the block reward in terms of uh, ROI and fiat currencies. Developers will build on the most uh, secure blockchain. Financialization from Wall Street will come in and help with derivatives and things of these natures. And then we get to world reserve uh, settlement currency type status. You know, that's the seventh network effect. And we've only seen just the first of that with Liquid that Blockstream came out with, settling between exchanges using Bitcoin. Um, and and so I would I would say that I, I suppose my argument would be the the first network effect would be of a higher importance or greater priority than the second network effect. Uh, so therefore, speculation will be of higher importance than merchant uh, use case. However, Bitcoin is also extensible. You know, an ounce of gold 2,000 years ago is not an ounce of gold today. And so we can extensify or we can build uh, Bitcoin into something new, something better, right? Uh, something more useful, something more valuable. And that's where uh, I think we can learn from some of the other cryptocurrencies like dash for example has this uh, instant x and it's a way that they are able to do pay like uh, instant payments and it seems very useful actually uh, it uses their master nodes and stuff like that but um, or there's lightning network or thunder network or there's like three different ones in the works right now uh, and Lightning Network, from what I understand, it will scale to trillions and trillions of transactions, all trustlessly. Is it really trustlessly? Like, it seems to me it's sort of like there's an entry gateway here, an exit gateway there, but you're still trusting sort of middlemen to some degree. Isn't that the case? Or can I host one and you host one at the other end and I just send you transactions over time or whatever? Uh, from what I understand, it is trustlessly and it's done securely which it needed check lock time verify in order to do. Um, but once the Bitcoins get into the Lightning Network, you're just netting 
the, the, the actual net settlement to the actual blockchain transaction that gets confirmed. Yeah, so one big transaction instead of a hundred small ones. That's kind of the idea. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and from what I understand, they've actually, uh, Rusty Russell has, uh, instead of building the primitives from scratch, uh, they've found some academic work that's been done and highly peer-reviewed and highly tested that they're going to be using as the primitives. So that's actually moved Lightning Network ahead significantly. Uh, but what I think it shows is that uh, it's a lot easier to just strap some extra duct tape on something instead of like make that custom piece that you know takes a lot of skill for the uh, for the F1 formula car. You now let's just keep duct taping around it instead of like putting a new muffler on. You know, Libsac or uh, 256 KP1 that. Uh, Peter Woolock come out with instead of using open SSL it's a whole lot easier to just duct tape stuff together but if that's the if that's the level of your skill or ability is only duct taping and that's the very best you can do and you're not a master craftsman and you don't have the github commits to cite to to show that you're a master craftsman then that's the argument you're going to make is hey we got to just duct tape stuff you know and and so what I what I think we need to do is we need to move forward very logically, very scientifically, theory, logic, data, right? Not emotion, brutally honest meritocracy. We want the best players on the court, hopefully all on the same team, but hey, if they want to be on different teams, fine by me, you know, but Team's got to be evenly matched. Otherwise, you're going to go with the good team, right? <laughs> like if it's if it's uh, if it's the Denver Broncos versus like the Pee Wee football team, you're going to bet on the Broncos. You know, that's just how it is. Brutally honest meritocracy. That's how I think we move forward. You know, in making decisions like this. Uh, and at the end of the day, everybody votes every day based on the software that they run as an individual you know run whatever software you want don't complain to me if your if your magic internet money becomes worthless <laughs> who are you going to bet on so you're saying that the the guy from linkedin uh, <laughs> Yeah, so I guess, I guess we were just talking and Thamos heard us mention Blockstream, so he just turned off the camera. <laughs> he really shouldn't shouldn't have done what he did, but I, I, do, I do think there's a reasonable argument on his side. Um, I, I happen to disagree with him, but I do, I do think there is some reasonableness on there. Dash is... Dash, I think, is, is a very promising technology. And it is kind of, because of the system, it's kind of like a living organism, right? Bitcoin right now is funded by major companies, right? BitPay, Coinbase, Blockstream. They're funded by companies that have a particular intention and, and will. They, they want to create, they want Bitcoin to be something, right? But Dash, Dash is internally funded. Dash is dependent on the value of its unit, right? The more valuable that, that Dash is, the more money that there is for this organism to keep developing and adapting and, and, and growing. And, uh, and that is a very new thing in the world. This is a, this is a, I honestly believe this is a cybernetic organism. We, are, we, humans, uh, and, and we mortal humans in the Dash community are basically the helping the gears that move it. But uh, we can fall away and this thing will continue. <laughs>